Uh, Kevin Spacey was on the witness stand in New York recently on Monday, and he was trying to gain sympathy from the jury by talking about his father, who allegedly is a neo-Nazi and a white supremacist. <laughs> it feels like he just picked, he's like, what's, yeah. what's hot right now? What's yeah. going to get me the most sympathy? So I, I really don't understand why he was getting into this amount of personal information on the stand when it really is only tangentially related <laughs> to the case. This is because Anthony Rapp the person who accused him of sexual battery uh, claimed that he was a fraud for not coming out as gay and then only coming out as gay when these accusations were public. That was what I was going to point out. I said, let's be fair. This is the guy who, when accused of like R-wording a bunch <laughs> of children, said, hey, I'm gay. There's another <laughs> case that he's going to be on trial for in the UK in 2023. Um, that I think was an adult though. Yeah. We, we read about that in before. the UK. Yep. Um, so he responding generally to the claim that he was a fraud or living a lie for not coming out, had to defend himself and brought up all of this personal family history. He said, my father was a white supremacist and a neo-Nazi. I've never talked about these things publicly ever. I grew up in a very complicated family dynamic. He said that in his family he uh they were subjected to a bunch of racist rants uh from his father he would constantly go on diatribes about uh his his racial vitriol and they couldn't invite people over because of that because he was afraid that they were gonna he was gonna his dad's gonna say a bunch of (laughs) weird stuff around the kids he he (laughs) said that um he couldn't come out as gay because his father would yell at him even at the idea that he was gay because he was into theater he said uh don't be an f word quote from kevin spacey i won't say it here because it's derogatory i certainly had a degree of shame so that's his excuse for uh, coming out as gay in his response to Anthony Rapp's accusations. Yeah. Um, this accusation, by the way, I don't think there's a way you can get out of this when you're admitting that the context is true. Yeah. <laughs> the context <laughs> is that he was hanging out with another adult man and a 14-year-old boy. Yep. As like a trio of like friends. No one is friends with a 14 year old boy at age 26. I'd like to point That's out weird. that that, uh, that was John Barrowman that they're talking about. John yes. Barrowman who plays Captain Jack Harkness on Torchwood. And last year or two years ago, got in trouble for like pulling his uh, his dick out on. Sorry, I said <laughs> it. Said pulled he said it out. It. He said pulled it. Pulled it out like on set. And then it was like, I was just trying to like lighten the mood. And then everyone's like, "Great minds think alike." <laughs> and, then, and then the and then it just disappeared. That the story just disappeared. Everyone's like, "Oh well, you know, stuff happens." No like, wonder Spacey and Barrowman got along so well. Yes, uh, um, very, very. Uh, Spacey claims that he was interested in Barrowman at the time. They all three of them were on Broadway shows at the time, but the context here is that one night he went clubbing. They they were at a nightclub with Anthony Rapp. 14, just I'll reiterate, 14 years old. And then uh, they like came back to his apartment after that. Then after that night, Kevin Spacey had a party at his apartment. And after everyone left, Anthony Rapp claims that that's when Spacey made sexual advances towards him. And then he fled the apartment after that. Um. Spacey says that his publicist pressured him into apologizing after these accusations were made public and that he in his heart knew that he was not guilty, but he felt like he had no choice but to say sorry if that happened. Spacey is such a scumbag. He he offered us the sincerest apology for what would have been deeply inappropriate drunken behavior so it wasn't a full admission but it wasn't denying that the context of that happened that you invited a 
middle school age child to your party that likely had alcohol and many adults there. And let's face it. And no supervision. What we need to be asking is why the hell mid-20s Kevin Spacey is hanging out with a 14-year-old. And why the hell he feels so comfortable admitting that he was doing that. Yeah. Dude, I get people on Twitter that like start yelling at me and then I yell back and then I find out they're like 15. I'm like, back off. Yeah. Like this isn't even yeah. in person. I'm just like, I don't even want to talk to you. I'm saying it's <laughs> the, it, the internet is like very, very different than real life. How does this happen in real life without you not realizing that it's bad? You have to know. I think it's interesting that he felt that pressure to apologize if he genuinely believes himself to be innocent yeah. because yeah. his publicist told him they're going to call you a victim blamer if you don't respond this way. Yeah. Um, and it was in the height of the Me Too era that makes sense that he was thinking about it like from that PR perspective. I thought this was before. Like, like this, the year it before? was in 2017 so like, that right this article came out yeah. uh, on BuzzFeed from Anthony Rapp. So that would have been right so, at the start of Me Too? At the, I, I don't, the it depends on when in 2017 it happened. Yeah. Late 2017 was definitely the peak. And then yeah. let's not forget the creepy Christmas video thing where he's in front of the fireplace. Yeah. Right? Where oh, he's like, God, yeah. Where he gives like a life update and it's like the creepiest, like it's like half, like half serial killer, half House of Cards character. Uh, like it's are so, we allowed to play that copyright that's, wise? That's a, very, that's a very good question. I have no idea. I'm always asking that. Yes. <laughs> uh, does anybody know? Would, uh, I wonder if Kevin Spacey would allow. Us I to, would uh, love to revisit that because maybe if the sounds off. Uh, well, no, you have to hear his. Uh, what do you even search for? Kevin Spacey weird video. I don't. It'll want to, come I'm, up I'm not first that. result. <laughs> well, I'm not searching. Oh, Kevin Spacey Christmas Eve video is the first thing that comes up. Yeah, uh, they played it on ABC News. Uh, it'd be funny if he copyrights us. Let me be Frank. Gee, I wonder where the name Frank came from. <laughs> Yikes. I know what you want. This is after everything oh, sure, came out. I tried to separate us, but what we have is too strong. It's too powerful. <laughs> I mean, after all, we shared everything, you and I. I told you my deepest, darkest secrets. I showed you exactly what people are capable of. I shocked you with my honesty, but mostly I challenged you and made you think. And you trusted me, even though you knew you shouldn't. <laughs> what? Like, go, go to the fireplace, <sighs> where he's like awkwardly poking at it, but not even like stoking the flame. <laughs> is, that the, is it the same video? Was it a different, a different creepy video? video? I think it's a different what video. is this? It's like a, I never saw this, this one. one. Came out December 24th. Uh, I, I, this, I remember the fireplace one. Yeah, I'd say this one's been, yeah. Like he's not even doing anything to the fire. <laughs> it's just weird. Be funnier if it was an electric you didn't fire. You really think I was going to miss the opportunity to wish you a Merry Christmas, did you? It's been a pretty good year, and I'm grateful to have my health back. And in light of that, I've made some changes in my life, and I'd like to invite you to join me. As we walk into 2020, I want to cast my vote for more good in this world. Ah, yes. I know what you're thinking. Can he be serious? I'm dead serious. And it's not that hard, trust me. The next time someone does something you don't like, you can go on the attack, but you can also hold your fire and do the unexpected. You can kill them with kindness. This is after Dude. one of his accusers. I think maybe two. I think it's like three or four. Like multiple people Multiple have died. accusers of Kevin Spacey have died in mysterious circumstances I didn't know before. That. He's a real life villain. Like not natural causes. No, he's like, he's like what? A, yeah, he's like a real life villain. And he, then he posts this video. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, those were a year apart. The one was December twenty fourth, twenty eighteen. The other one the, the fireplace one was December twenty fourth, twenty nineteen. He is dead serious. <sighs> so uh, it says a lawyer for Spacey who has denied the allegation as well as uh, as other sexual misconduct claims argued for a dismissal of the case stating that Rapp's legal team has failed to prove his allegation, meaning that they were talking about that he was uh, he's accused of uh, the claim was of intentional infliction of emotional distress. Yeah, that uh, the charge that of emotional distress was um, dismissed. dismissed because it was like redundant, according to the judge. But he's still on trial for sexual battery, yeah. and... Can they even get him for this? I don't 
20... No, this was so long ago. It was in 1986. That's pushing 40 years, man. Yeah. The guy, Anthony Rapp, is 50 years old now. Oh, my God. It's just and it's bonkers, and it's, it it's lets difficult you know how evil. to get justice. It's not, there will be no justice. For, like what's the? It's a if it's a. I, if I were Anthony Rapp, I would be afraid for my life. Yeah. Like I wonder if he has the enough like security, and safeguards in place for himself. Like I'm not like outwardly saying that Kevin Spacey is responsible for the death of some of his accusers, but it's very suspicious. It's, it's suspicious, and I would be afraid. In Anthony Rapp's shoes. Uh, out of all the people that are accused of stuff, Kevin Spacey's probably the, uh, the scariest out of all of them because he seems to always uh, get his way, no matter what. And now he's choking up and starting to cry in court, yeah. pretending to be this victimized little baby. And he is apologizing for his previous apology he he learned the lesson that you shouldn't apologize when you don't believe you did anything wrong. Uh, That's yeah. true, yeah. but you know what you did. Yeah. Well, they have no shame. That's such a heavy thing, though. Like, if somebody accused me of R-wording somebody, I'm not apologizing if I didn't do it. Yeah. So the fact that he apologizes, just it's creepy. He apologized for what would have been inappropriate if it happened. <laughs> okay, OJ. But it's like, Jeez. <laughs> it's literally OJ if I did yeah. it. Like, yeah. Oh my God. Didn't they pull so that book? So creepy. Remember that? that was a book? It was like 15 years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. wrote a book that was called If, if I, I Did, did it, it, This Is like, How. Come on, bro. Uh, and then like the the government or somebody said that they, he couldn't write about it because he couldn't profit off something or something like and that. Some people just yeah. like to throw their weight around yeah. in the public eye that way. Right. So Look what it, I can get away with. I, I don't think he ends up facing any justice for this. Call me jaded, but I don't think he I don't think he ends up getting in trouble for this. I think he gets away with it. What do you prove? Like, how do you prove it? I mean, he's still got a whole other trial to go through. Th that one, maybe, like, maybe you could get, like, what burden of proof would be less if so. If that person lives. If, if such a thing is, exists for this, would be like, how do you prove it 26 or however many decades later? How would you have proven it in 1986, though? You can't. It's happened behind closed doors. You just go with in the front no, of With no witnesses there. Yep. <laughs> and, and, like... Yeah. It's just impossible. Beyond this, we've got Harvey Weinstein is in is a, on trial right now. Who else was on trial right now? Not just not just him. Um. Yeah. There's also Danny Masterson. Danny Masterson is on trial. So there's a whole bunch of them that there's, are that are going. They're not to taking. Shia LaBeouf is even going yeah. to trial in April for what next year. He got accused of sexual battery by FKA Twigs. His ex-wife. No, he wasn't married to ex -girlfriend. her. Ex-girlfriend. They they just dated in 2018. Yeah, um, but there's always a slew of these trials yep. uh, because they're all deviants. <laughs> and then there's the there's the Evan Rachel Wood situation oh, with, with Marilyn, Marilyn Manson. Manson. That's not necessarily a Me Too thing. Kind of. She it, it was seen as like the follow up it. to the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial. And she made a documentary about it. The, yeah, there's the documentary. I believe it's on Hulu. Yeah. Um, and then there was Rex Orange County. That's uh, more recent. Arcade Fire. Uh, yeah, the Arcade Fire situation too. It's just, it's just, it's just a never-ending slate of these people because the entertainment industry is uniquely plagued by this. I swear, like the Me Too movement tried to place blame on everyone in society, all of these industries, like tech and health and academia everyone has these same problems with harassment and misconduct believe it but or not it's definitely way worse in hollywood and they're not willing to admit it well let's face it like there is no other industry that i can think of off the top of my head at least where a 14 year old and an adult are going to be working together and that's just considered normal but they weren't even working together they were just working in the same industry in the same city and they became "Quote unquote friends." Well, think of uh, all the Disney or, or the Nickelodeon stars who then had to work with adults all their all their lives, and then bad in stuff a way happens that stuff is unavoidable if you are working on yeah. a show that stars a kid. But like they're all in this situation on different Broadway shows. Yeah, and he's inviting a fourteen year old to a nightclub. 
it was, with a guy, an adult man that he's interested in. And he's like, it was the eighties, man. It was totally different time back oh, then. Like so that's weird. That, that's like that's basically his excuse. He's like, he's like, you know what? It was it was a different time. And his quote is, "I was very impressed with Mr. Barrowman. He was very <laughs> handsome and very charming. Anthony Rapp seemed like a kid. John Barrowman seemed like a man." Uh, but then if if you thought of Anthony Rapp as this kid who didn't belong, why were you partying with him and drinking with him and hanging out with him alone with another adult? Because you're all absolute scumbag creeps. Wait, didn't didn't Family Guy do some kind of Kevin yeah. Spacey thing? We, uh, that, yeah. A, a, a chat, the, where are the parents? The Yeah. Where? Well, what like, did, are Anthony Rapp's parents still around? Why weren't they protecting him? Yeah. That's another part of it's a fault. Is that like that's a, like we we talk about like Hollywood being at fault and they are, but you have to also these parents have to realize that it is not a viable thing that that your chances of coming out of it unscathed if you start as a child are a hell of a lot small or a hell of a lot worse than if you start as an adult and even then. Didn't Spacey's lawyer uh, claim that Anthony Rapp brought forward these? these allegations because his career was dipping and I, he was looking to I ride off of, of Spacey's coattails. I mean, that makes that, that's actually the, like a, a, a the thing that would happen. The defense lawyers but. for people accused of sexual battery and misconduct in Hollywood are always like the most accidentally brutal yeah. people. <laughs> like they inadvertently they don't give a crap. say what people on Twitter are not allowed to say <laughs> yeah. Yeah. in court. <laughs> so it says days after the first meeting, uh, Rap testifies that he went to Spacey's home for a party. Again, why was a 14 year old at a party? And everyone at the party just acted like that was normal. Who, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who else was there? Who, like, like, like under age, 25 years, like 26 years ago or however long ago it was. It says, uh, but the unidentified, unidentified friend, who was also a teen at the time, <laughs> uh, reportedly claimed in a deposition that they went to Spacey's home the first night they met when the Oscar winner attempted to entice rap into an, a sexual encounter. It's just, can we just throw him in jail? Yeah, and it's like, I, I don't care if he was drunk. You don't do something like that when you're drunk if you didn't with. conceive of doing it while sober. And he shouldn't be there to begin with. Right. The, the, the kid admitting, be with. admitting openly to the context and having the excuse of like, oh, it was just the culture of our, of our work time. environment and the time back then. Yep. You don't get an excuse. It's just, uh, it's disgusting. I did see a, a meme the other day. It says Steven Tyler looks like the mom who would let you drink over at their kid. The, the friend who has a mom who would let you drink over at their house as long as they <laughs> took your car keys. Yeah. That's, that's accurate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't think anything happens to him. I, I think he ends up getting away with it. Uh, it's just maybe the other trial, but we'll see. It was just uh, a good time to also highlight another point in which we point out that Hollywood is full of absolute scumbags. Yeah, so. it is worth mentioning. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.